We are in the midst of such a rich case study in the current stock market action that let's continue on with the discussion that we've had really over the course of the last few weeks where we have discussed the 2020 outlook and also uh, what we expected to see happen in the month of January, which is a very important month considering what has happened in 2019. So we're asking the question here, is this distribution or reaccumulation that we are in the grips of as this market is unfolding? Welcome to Power Charting. I'm Bruce Frazier, your host. Last week, we looked at this chart, which was made on the 22nd. We can see here that there was an upthrust throw over of an upward trend channel that has basically gripped the market in January of 2020. This extension of the rally in 2019 was uh, largely expected. We look for peaks and troughs, important peaks and troughs to occur around the ends of quarters, the ends of years. And so having follow through in January is, uh, especially with such a strong 2019, is to be expected. And here we are coming into the time of the beginning of earnings season in uh, January. And this is a classic place for the composite operator types to sell stock because the stock market has been anticipating and discounting uh, earnings and good earnings in the fourth quarter of the year. And so with this in mind, we had said that the market could begin to sell off in the first quarter and that we could have a decline that could come down to the bottom of this channel and then also to the support area and that we would look for a larger distribution structure in the market upon this weakness. And so keep in mind that the stock market is fractal and works in pretty much all time frames. So we're looking at a 30 minute chart here. We could look at five minute charts. We can look at daily weekly charts and we will see these structures of these patterns especially the white coffee structures that we use to devise our tactics show up uh, repeatedly in these different time frames. So, and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Now, this is what happened after we put this chart up last week. So here is what has occurred. Note the large gap down that went through the area of the bottom of the channel which was anchored by these two points, and then a rally, a sharp rally, that took it up to a lower high. Well, this is classic last point of supply type behavior. Last point of supply is the last place the market rallies to before supply engulfs the market and drives down prices aggressively because all of this area that preceded it was all selling by large informed interests, which we call a, a, heur a heuristic that we call the composite operator, which is a collection of the really big, super smart traders that accumulate and distribute shares at the appropriate times, which is what our intention is as Wyckoffians, is to follow in their footsteps. So we could see their footsteps at work here with the buying climax and then notice this rally. Well, look at how the rally ended. It came back into the channel and then see the big gap here. So there's a huge gap on the thrust upward into the last point of supply and then immediately a response of a very large amount of supply coming in, which is a cue for us to look for a continuation of this uh, decline because we're seeing the completion of distribution on a minor scale. Again, this is a fractal 
uh, example. And so this is not to say that the bull market is over. It's just, and we've looked at these in the past, that this is just something that is showing up in a uh, small time frame, and we can see all of the preconditions and conditions that go with the turning of a market from up to down here. Notice the volume, lots of volume coming in, which is supply. This shows that there's uh, large uh, sellers that are engulfing the market with stock. Look at this huge gap in here. And we also have a news related event, which is this uh, devastating coronavirus, which uh, I believe the composite operator types were queued into early on before it got onto um, you know, the front page of the newspaper, so to speak. Now, look at this rally. This rally is a rally of poor quality with generally diminishing volume, but the, there's a lot of overlap here. And then there's a climactic surge with a huge tail right at the end. And we're gonna call this another last point of supply. Well, look where the supply comes in. We labeled this area over here initially preliminary supply. And we can see that there was huge gaps. Now this is right at the beginning of the year, but there's a gap here and there's a gap here and it goes down, touches the support area again. We draw a support line across here. So there's weakness on a, on a large scale, which is evidence of supply coming into the market with a lot of volume. And so this tells us that supply is starting to present itself even in the uptrending channel and that we want to be on our toes for an exhaustion of the uptrend with a buying climax. Okay, so as we see this, the next thing we want to do is, as we said last week, is that we should be presented with an opportunity to take a point and figure count. This is a distribution count and we're taking it across this area right here. We have a 30-minute data chart, point and figure, one box reversal. We're just looking for swing trading events here. The box size of the ATR is 70.92. We count across here 25 columns, one box reversal, so it's 25 times one times 70.92 gives us 1,773 points of potential from here. Now, we've started to weaken again, but we uh, are still in the area of the structure. So it's very possible that there could be more rallies that come before this is done. And if this is distribution, that the count could grow larger. So the thing that we would look for would be a sign of weakness that would take out these support areas right here. So this is our count range. Now this is a preliminary count. It could grow larger. And so we are watching to see whether or not weakness just shatters the bottom of the support area or whether or not it can build more count. So 27,587 down to 27,091 on the Dow. For those that of you that are interested in the S&P, I like the Dow because I think it tracks very true, especially on point and figure, but the S&P is quite good also. There's a count here and then also a count here. So you might consider those and take those counts uh, as uh, you see fit. Okay, so here, we see this chart, which we looked at before. This is all of 2019 daily bars. And this is a, just as we saw a channel in the beginning of 2020 in the month of January, right here, there's a bigger channel that goes all the way back to June. And this channel also became overbought and had a throw over here in January, just at the same time that the intraday uh, upward trending channel did the same thing. So they both had this overbought condition simultaneously. 
And so uh, we have sort of a double event here. Now notice you can see the distribution uh, as it exists here, provided it breaks down, but this distribution would count across, and this is what we just looked at on the 30 minute, on the intraday chart and on the point figure. And so we would be looking for this, you can see here, let's see if I can erase this. Uh, we can see here that we're right on this channel, this uh, larger channel back to October, the market is hovering right on that at this time. So a rally off of that channel and then even attempting to get to new highs would be very important to preserving this existing uptrend. We think that that's very much in doubt uh, at this time, but it's possible because we are, look at the volume here, we're seeing huge amounts of volume coming in as we are uh, turning off the peak. So volume off the peak is uh, tremendous supply coming in. And so we can see that if we look at the recent volume characteristics that the volume here recently is quite high compared to the average. So how far down can this market go? Well, we have a point figure count that really just goes down to sort of right into here at this time, but we said that it could grow larger and uh, we can see that there is volatility that goes down uh, the width of this channel. So we'll be uh, watching for clues about that as we go forward. Okay, so this chart we've seen in the past. And so I just want to uh, sort of brace you for the possibilities for how this could happen. We saw a January peak coming in. This is the US presidential election years. 2020 is an election year, as we all know. So in January, we have a peak that comes in. It appears that we're getting that peak now. And then we would look for a period of weakness in the market that would take us back down into an automatic reaction. And so we have resistance at the buying climax. We have support at the automatic reaction lows wherever that might be, this model suggests it'll be in February. We know that it's not gonna look just like this. It could be vastly different, it may not happen this way at all, but it gives us a, a model that we can compare our tape reading to uh, this uh, classic historic average of all the presidential election years. And so we would look for a reaccumulation trading range that would occur into uh, May, June, and then begin another uptrend going forward. And so this is something that we could look for in our market analysis. Like I said, it could happen vastly different from this, but, and you can see here, look at this area here, it looks like classic fractal distribution it takes the market right back down to the support area again. So uh, lots of possibilities for 2020. It appears and we're looking for reaccumulation to occur. Uh, uh, the difference this time versus the uh, tremendous weakness that we had in uh, 2018 into the end of the year was that there was a hostile interest rate environment where rates had gone up substantially into uh, summer. And then that had a profound impact on market trends and the market broke badly from October into the end of the year. Well, here we have a completely different situation because we have what appears to be a very benign interest rate environment with interest rates low and the Fed committing to keeping them stable through the course of the year. So whether they can accomplish that or not is anybody's guess, but that's their intention. And so if we get that low stable interest rate environment, the market should not have anywhere near the volatility that it had back in 2018. So probably the worst decline that we would get in this scenario that we're looking at would be the buying climax down to the automatic reaction. 
low and that probably it, it wouldn't surprise me at all if the remainder of this area was actually a series of higher lows in a reaccumulation type structure, which we are gonna look at right now. And so here, here's our conventional reaccumulation trading range model, and they can happen differently than this, but this is a very good model. It's happened this way a lot. As a matter of fact, we're gonna do a case study in a minute on this. So buying climax, automatic reaction, after a big uptrend, which was the 2019 uptrend, and then a range bound condition, buying climax is the resistance, automatic reaction is the low, and then a trading range where volatility comes out of the market. And look at, in this model, higher lows are made throughout and the volatility diminishes in each of these areas before an important uptrend begins. And the vol and volatility comes in on a rising scale because stock has been absorbed and accumulated through this whole period. And so uh, the condition we have now is a point and figure count is fulfilled uh, for tw the 2019 the accumulation count and reaccumulation count. We got to the top of the channel on two levels, so intraday and daily. We were climactic into January of the new year, and the sentiment as we had looked at in past episodes has been very, very bullish. And now I'm sure that the sentiment is tailing off, but that extreme bullish sentiment did in fact uh, put us in a position where uh, the market had to cool off, so to speak. I wanna show you this distribution schematic really just for one reason. And that is, is that reaccumulations and distributions start in the same way. They have a buying climax, then an outsized volatile decline, which is an automatic reaction, and then we go into a big trading range. The difference between distribution and accumulation is in fact that in distribution, the volatility continues to remain high and actually continues throughout the structure, especially as you get into the last, last areas of last point of supply, where the rallies attempt to go up but fail throughout. And so volatility will remain high in a distribution schematic where in reaccumulation, the volatility will generally get, uh, will diminish uh, as we go along. And so, not that we're predicting this at all, but it's certainly possible and we will keep our focus on the possibilities of this happening in 2020, but uh, uh, we wanna just be open-minded and we wanna trade what the market's telling us it wants to do. We don't wanna trade uh, based on opinions about what should happen, but the trend in the bull market has been exceptional and we would expect the trend to continue. We just have had a number of pauses along the way that has basically recharged the market to continue its uptrend. So we will document these things and talk about them as we go along through the course of the year. And so now what I wanna do is change gears because um, I have a, uh, question that's come in that I think might benefit us all to look at. And uh, I wanna add a sort of a segment to the program also. And so let's read the question. Uh, Hi Bruce, I'm trying to apply point and figure from watching your videos to Yeti. Although it is a little different with the upward slope to it compared to the ones I've seen you do before, Thus, I was wondering if you might already have done Yeti somewhere that I might have missed or if you uh, off the top might recognize the pattern to another stock you might have done previously and can point me in the right direction. You guys are awesome and add great a great deal of value with your education. Thank you, John. John, thank you for the uh, uh, great comment. Thank you for a really good question. Uh, I've asked John's permission to be able to put up Yeti and do a 
case study with uh, Yeti for all of us because I think it's a really good question that in a really good case study that we can learn from. And I want you to keep in mind the reaccumulation structure that we just looked at on that model. So, and I'd also like to suggest that if you have a Wyckoff question that you think might be uh, interesting, not only for yourself, but for others, send that question in and I will choose among them for the ones that I think might uh, best benefit us all to talk about. I can't cover all the questions and I can't uh, res respond individually to the questions that you have, but I will try to select the ones that I think might be best um, studied by all of us. And so just send me an email at uh, uh, Bruce F at stockcharts.com and we, we will uh, look at these questions and pick some out from time to time and we will talk about them here on Power Charting. So, and thank you in advance for your questions. I read all the email and uh, try to uh, craft the message of power charting and the blogs to the things that uh, it appears that you're asking to uh, be uh, further studied or discussed. So uh, thank you very much for those. And here is Yeti. And so ah, notice this, it looks an awful lot well, as a matter of fact, let's just go back. Here is our reaccumulation labeling. Right here, you can see throughout higher lows, rising gradient throughout. And you can see that this sets up a condition where absorption has occurred and sets up an important rally phase to come after that. Okay, so let's look here and see what we have. So we have a buying climax, an automatic reaction, huge amounts of supply coming in. You can see all this volume and automatic reaction low. We draw resistance at the high and we draw support at the low. We can see that the resistance comes into play here in this uh, first attempt to up thrust the uh, area and has a failure back into the trading range. What's interesting is there's a tremendous amount of volume right off the peak, and this volume shows supply, there is supply present, and then the volume tapers off and the volatility also tapers off into this important low. And at the point of the low, you can see that the volume is uh, pretty, uh, pretty muted. Then there's a test here, and a rally. Now, the volume is continuing to uh, dampen down throughout this whole area, and then it comes in again. We'll notice this volume coming in right here. Well, this volume, in fact, probably has earnings related to it, is has a large amount of uh, demand in the volume bar stops the decline, goes down for a test, and look at the volume dry up on the attempt to go back down again. And it makes a series of higher lows all the way through here. So this looks very constructive. Now, the volume throughout this last area from the low onward is pretty high volume. And uh, I would suggest that this volume, for instance, comes very, very near this low right here. And so this is a last point of support type low, a good rally. And we can see that the volume is coming in as there's an attempt to go back up to the resistance area. So there is some supply present there, but look what happens right after the supply shows up at resistance is that the volume gets really dull and low as there's an, an attempt to come back down again. And then immediately it pivots off of that and the volume is expanding, very constructive. So this is something that looks an awful lot like reaccumulation after a really good uptrend. 
And so this is what John, I think, is seeing in his chart. But his question is this, turning to the point figure, is how do you count this? What is the methodology by which we would count the area? And so this is that last pullback where the volume got quite low into here. And the way to count this, and we can see that this has got to be a provisional count because we're not out of the reaccumulation area yet, if this is in fact reaccumulation, is to count from this last low provisionally down to the low that was made here. So this decline has a lot of supply in it. And so the point at which the low of this decline is set is where we want to take our count to. And then the other count that we would want to take is from this low. We always count from right to left, is to count from here over to this low, because this is the also another place where supply engulfed the market and took it down to the ultimate low in the reaccumulation area. Okay, so I got to keep track of the time here, night to linger. So let's see, we have 11 columns here, kind of cross. We have 17 columns here. And so we have uh, traditional scaling, three box reversal, 11 times three times one, that gives us 33 points of uh, potential from this low and the count line, which is here. So 26 and 33, and that gives us a count up to 59 to 66. And so that is this count area here. And this is quite a worthwhile uh, advance or uh, objective for trading purposes in this point and figure. And then we have the larger count, which is to here, which is uh, 51 points. And that takes us 75 to 84. And so this, these two counts are, meaningful have meaningful uh, point and figure objectives in them. And so the thing to keep in mind is that the it, this is a provisional count because it's not out of the accumulation area, but that doesn't mean we're not trading it. It just means that the count may not be complete and it may not get out. It may have to have another attempt to go down before it can go up again. Uh, it has not cleared resistance. The count may grow and become larger. And there is an outside chance that it may not be a stepping stone reaccumulation. And so with that in mind, I want to tell you about a course in point and figure analysis that Roman Bogomazov and I are going to do. And it's point and figure part three. So you're seeing part one here, but go to wyckoffanalytics.com and very soon this is going to be announced as part three and it's going to be advanced point and figure counting and case studies and how to trade right off the point and figure charts and how to do uh, traditional counting and also how to do advanced counting technique just as we did here today with this uh, example that we did in Yeti. And I'd like to thank John for submitting that question. If you have questions, please submit them. Had a great session. Thanks for being here and we'll see you next week.